So comets, these are the icy things from the outer solar system. So imagine that we've got the sun, center of the solar system, and we have one of these icy Kuiper belt objects or out here. So way out here beyond anything else, and then something disrupts the orbit of it. And so if you disrupt the orbit of it, it dives in close to the sun and then back out. Okay, now. As it dives in close to the sun and then goes back out, then when it gets close to the sun, the sun heats it up. And then as you heat it up, remember it's made of both rock and ice. The ice can't stay solid when it gets heated up. Now, it doesn't really melt because in a vacuum, you cannot have liquid water. So it turns straight into a gas. It sublimates. And when it turns from solid to gas, it blows away and blows dust and other sort of debris that's part of that comet away from it. And the sunlight pushes it away so it makes a tail. And so the tail is always going to be pointing away from the sun. And so that gives you your classic comet right there. All right. The most famous of comets was Halley's Comet after Edmund Halley. Edmund Halley actually didn't see his comet. Uh, what he did was he noticed, he was an astronomer, and, uh, and he noticed that uh, in the 1600s, and he noticed that, that in historical records that people had seen a comet every 76 years. Now, they saw comets like every now and then, but he noticed that every 76 years there was a, there was a comet and that the description of this comet seemed to be very similar to the description of the comet 76 years after that. Now, comets come with all different kinds of descriptions, and, and when I was a, a student, I used to read these descriptions, and, and they were often, you know, people would flip out with it when they saw a comet, because comets tended to be uh, uh, harbingers of ill, Ill luck, they thought, because the comet was, didn't follow the nice, neat orbit of the moon and the planets and so forth, and so people couldn't calculate what it was going to do. It just suddenly appeared, and so they, I mean, it was like, oh, wow, that doesn't seem to fit, so that, that was considered bad. Secondly, um, the comets, they weren't really sure how, how they weren't, what they were, etc. cetera. Uh, and they also looked kind of scary because I kept hearing about them looking at big flaming swords in the sky. And so uh, I was wondering about that because in my career, comets did not look like flaming swords. Comets looked like little fuzzballs. Uh, even, even Halley's Comet, when it came by in 1986, looked like a fuzzball that you saw in binoculars. Uh, it didn't look all that specular. Now, of course, in 1986, it was passing close to the sun on the other side of the sun from Earth, and so it was a long ways away. Uh, 1910, it actually passed by, uh, and, and Earth actually went through the outer part of the tail of it. And so it was apparently a very spectacular thing in 1910, and it'll probably be pretty spectacular next time it comes by, too. But in and, and, and 1986, it wasn't. Halley realized that this might be the same comet because he kept, you know, look, re, right, looking at the calculations here and, and the orbital pass and so forth. Uh, now, he lived about the same time as Isaac Newton, so he was talking to Newton and, and explaining his theory that this might be the same comet. And Newton explained the gravity and orbital dynamics to him, and he went through all the, the detailed mathematics, com or very complicated stuff, uh, particularly in those days and calculated that, in fact, that it was the same comet, and he even predicted when it was going to come back again, and that it was going to be, you know, in a certain part of the sky at a certain time of the year, and that he died. Okay. And then the comet came back and did exactly what he said it was going to do. So they named it Halley's Comet. Okay. Now, I've, I've, I've heard uh, the pronunciation is Halley's Comet. Um, some people say it really should be Halley's Comet. Uh, um, but not Halley's Comet. Now, Halley's Comet is how we say this in North America. And so the question is, why do we say Halley's Comet instead of Halley's Comet or Halley's Comet? Because if you look at it, you know, you know how English works. Those are two L's right there together between the A and the E. That's not, that's not a hard A. That's not, that's not a long A. That's not, that's not A sound. That's, that's going to be an A ah or, or A. Ah. So, Holly or Halley. So, why do we mispronounce this? Well, because there was a rock and roll um, artist named Bill Haley, and his band was called the Comets. 
So Bill Haley in the comments, uh, they're famous for rock around the clock. And so uh, uh, because of that, the name Haley got associated with comets. And so we've been mispronouncing it ever since. Most of the time, comets are little faint, fuzzy smudges. And then in the 1990s, a comet came by called Haikataki. Comet Haikataki, named after uh, Yuji Haikataki, amateur astronomer in Japan that found it. And it had a near miss to Earth. Well, by near miss, it was 10 million miles. Uh, but that's kind of a near miss and uh, had this huge blue tail out there. And I remember uh, driving up uh, to an observing site uh, up in Oklahoma and getting out of the car and looking up and my jaw dropping because, well, all these comets that look like little faint fuzzballs, this one like, looked like a great big blue flame stretching 90 degrees across the sky. And it's like, oh, it really does look like a big blue flame. Now I understood, you know, the, the, when people were thinking of a big blue, f big flaming sword about to smite Earth, it kind of made sense because this one finally actually looked like that. Uh, there's Yuji Haikataki, amateur astronomer, uh, um, and uh, he, there's, there's his uh, double giant binoculars that he used to find uh, this comet. When you discover a comet, you normally get to name the comet, and it normally gets named after you. So it's called Comet Haikataki because it's named after him. Uh, uh, there are several other comets that are out there named after the person who discovered them, but what if two people find it? You know, it's on a particular night, two people find it. Uh, uh, like Horace Tuttle and uh, uh, Jonathan Swift find this comet, so we call it Comet Swift Tuttle. Um, Ikea Zhang. Again, one in which more than one person found it. Uh, comet Hale Bop, two, two astronomers found that. Okay. Um, so there, if, if a comet repeats, in other words, you know, you have this thing that dives in close to the sun, goes back out. Normally, it doesn't come back in human history. But if it passes close to Jupiter or Saturn or even Uranus or Neptune, the gravity of those, those gas giants can actually bend the orbit around so it comes back you know, in years or decades. Uh, so it repeats. Uh, Halley's Comet uh, comes back uh, about every 76 years. And so some of them come back every few hundred years or 100 years or a few come back every seven or eight years. The ones that come back every seven or eight years because they come by so often, there's very little ice left in them to make much of a tail so that you barely even see them. Uh, so you use a P to indicate a periodic comet. Sometimes, though, uh, they break apart when they get too close to the sun and they dissipate completely, and that would be a D right there. So then, then it never comes back again. If they have a hyperbolic orbit and they dive in and out and, and do not come back in recorded history, or if they come back in millions of years or something, uh, that would be if you just call it a C. So Haikataki and Hale Bopp are both examples of that. They probably do uh, both repeat, but not within human lifetimes or, or even within uh, the lifetime of our civilization. As I said before, uh, the tail always points away from the, the sun. So as it comes in close to the sun, the tail is stretching away. Okay, when it passes by the sun, the tail is to the side. When it's going away from the sun, the tail is actually in front of the comet. Uh, light pressure and the solar wind are pushing away uh, from it. So that's, that's why this orientation is like There's actually two possible tails. Uh, this is a picture of the comet hale Bop right there. And you see a blue tail up here. And then you also see a curved yellow tail. Uh, the blue tail is called an ion tail or a gas tail. And the other tail is called a dust tail, primarily because the blue tail is made of ionized gas and the yellow tail is made of dust. You know, the type 1 tail, which is the ion tail, okay, is blue and straight. Uh, that gas is being blown straight back by the solar wind, and so it, it tends to be this, this very straight tail. 
The dust tail is being pushed away by light pressure against dust particles, and they're actually trying to orbit the sun. So, so as those dust particles are orbiting, their orbit being a little bit different is being curved over a little bit because they're, they're, as they get pushed away from the sun, they're going a little bit slower than the comet. Okay. Uh, the blue is due to um, emissions from the, the ions, and the yellow is due to reflected sunlight. So there we have the two-tailed frame.